This is ground affected. <laughs> <laughs> I say, oh no. We go, oh no, in the background. This is ground affected. And this camera does not like to stay in its place. So come in team lift, like it says. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's really heavy. Four, the eight, seven. <laughs> Did I get? <laughs> okay, well, I broke the handle. Let me try. Oh, my nipple. Definitely cutting that part out the video. So unboxing guard. I like these. I um, put this in my 3D printer so that I can. What a shot, bro. Go look where it landed. What, where? In the printer. What printer? This one. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. I don't know if this is a me being able to pull this out this box kind of thing. I feel like we have to dismantle the box. You can't just pull this out like this. I think we have to f Wait, cut where's it. where's the instructions? That was in unboxing instructions, you know? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the help of another person, carefully lift the machine out from the box. Mate, they're showing these guys put their arms down inside of this box. Yeah, but they're probably not doing it on a table. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing it on the floor, but so also that is a more practical way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe them. There's nothing to hold on to. Just the back, is it? Or? No, because this is going to break. Oh. Okay, go quickly. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> oh Let's no. take it out of this bag first. This is the Makera Carvera Air desktop CNC machine. I have always wanted a CNC machine, and if you know anything about the stuff I like to build in my spare time, this machine is going to come in handy for many projects in the future. And thankfully, they sent me one to play with, so I'm going to try and make something with George. Look at the unboxing. <laughs> Once I opened a laser machine and it did the same thing and I made the whole viewers listen to I think I was there for when you recorded it <laughs> Before I do any of the making with this machine and while I unpack it I'm going to deliver you some of the specifications uh, but I need to preface that with a few words of warning. I have absolutely no idea how to do anything with CNC machining. In fact, this is so far outside of my pay grade, I, I'm surprised I'm still here to talk to you after making this video. Now, I want to say that this machine has got a workable area of 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 13 centimeters. The 13 is the Z axis, by the way. Yes, it's kind of weird because even though you're cutting things sort of in 2D, you're still kind of working in 3D. And speaking of 3D, 3D, it has also got a fourth axis, which has a workable area of 9.2 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Okay, so in this box, which is the accessories, we have a mystery bag of more bits. Fantastic. And this is really a mystery bag. That looks like a collet. There's some cool glasses for just in case. Laser glasses. No, there's the laser glasses there. These ones are just for protection in case anything jumps out the box to b try to bite you. Yeah. These are bits colors. I don't know what those are. I'll just say it like I know what it is. That's clearly the wide probe. This is the panic button. Fourth axis. Ooh. Ooh. This is big boys toys. I feel like I'm too, I'm too young to play with it. <laughs> I feel like at any minute, my dad's gonna come and I'll say, Hey, what are you doing? Why are you touching my stuff? Well, I mean, I don't know how to start. Boop! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it attaches somewhere, bro. Oh. oh! So do you think I have to do this first? Also, maybe this, it 
can only work when it's doing certain things, then how's it gonna change its tool? Can it still change its tool? Do I have to physically change its tool? What's this? Why is there this? How do I, is that meant to be in there? I feel like that's meant to be in there. Then how does it, and why does it, and where's it supposed to? Like, is it meant to? Done that already. Now it says Wi-Fi configuration. This part we can't record, otherwise then people will figure out where I am and then try to buy stuff from my shop or something. Now, as you can tell, I had many questions, which I'm sure you have questions for yourself. Like, what the hell is this guy going to even be doing with a CNC machine? Well, future projects, who knows? But right now, in this video, I'm going to be making a very small first-person view drone for George to fly around, because that is a thing that George does. We first needed to figure out the size of our material, and using ChatGPT, we figured out what kind of tools we needed to use in order to cut this carbon fiber. Use the Spiral Zero Single Flute Yellow Cap first. If you're worried about that breaking, go with the corn bit. Want to help making the cam settings? Yes, I do, in fact. Settings will pop up on the right, and then we need to configure them. So I'll tell you them, and then you type them in. We obviously have no idea what we're doing, so we watched some YouTube videos to get us started. <laughs> That handle is how you move the thingy out. So there's probably a collet that needs to be, yeah, it needs a collet to stop it going all the way up. There's a bunch of rubbers in there. Oh, it's here, yeah, right here. Oh, that one already comes with one. Maybe we keep him out for now anyway, because we're going to probably have to do some setting for him. And then we need to do some setting for him, right? And then should we put this tool back together and then let's try to do the setting and then stick this down. And then we try to make it a flying aeroplane drone. And as with any new tool, there was a lot of apprehension and a lot of research that went into figuring out how to get it to work. I don't know if I want to do any of this. No, I don't Click think it. we should. <laughs> Oh. 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 After making sure the equipment was all set up in the computer, we needed to make the machine level itself. We needed to tell the machine exactly where the material was inside of the machine before we did anything dumb. Actually, I don't know where it's starting from. After a quick call to Fohammer, who was on holiday at the time, he managed to help us figure out that, much like a laser machine, a CNC machine needs to start from somewhere, which is usually the bottom left. And then I'm going to press the confirm button and hope to Jesus. Now, Makera sent me this little probing tool that came with my machine. I don't think this is a standard thing, and it's a, probably an add-on for your machine. But this is the way that I used to test where my material was so the machine knew where to start. And then what? It's going to tell us to change the tool. So we're going to change this to the cutting tool. After probing the surface, it was time to change the tool to put the cutting bit in and hope for the best. I'm so scared. What if it breaks the tool? It smashes our eyes out. So hopefully it's not long because my arm already hurts. I'm so scared right now. My heart is beating. Oh, it's spinning. Oh my god, I'm terrified. Into it. We're seeing the ring, bro! Do we just change the tool anyway, or? I think we just change the tool anyway. But look, it does say, look, T1, two millimetre, so it will tell us to change the tool. And also, we're gonna have to probe it again anyway, I think. So if we click run. Oh my God. I'm so scared, it says so change, change to the probe to tool. The process didn't take long for us to figure out and become actual professionals at doing this thing. Now it asks us to change the other tool, so we're gonna change the other tool. For those that may not understand, the reason we needed to change the tools each time was because the size of the holes and the size of the outside cut were slightly different. It's not good using a very tiny tool to cut a large area when you can use the bigger tool, but also it's no good using the big tool if you've got tiny holes to cut. So we used two tools. Oh my god, it's really We're making working. drones. It's really gonna work. It's maybe a bit too deep. It's hey? a tiny bit too deep. But I don't I don't think it matters. I think that No, makes, well it's gonna just sure destroy this thing too. Yeah, but that's quick. why you have lots of these. I don't, there's only two. 
The carbon fiber sheet that we had was a little bit too big for my build area. So you can see I cut a little notch out to make it fit on the build plate. But there was another problem which we are still going to find out. So basically we are a bunch of idiots and we didn't uh, tie it down. So it shot out and we nearly died. But it's okay, we're going to screw it down now instead. And the next time around we'll actually put tape because that's probably the clever thing to do. What we hadn't anticipated was that once we had cut a part loose, it was no longer held down by the outside parts that was holding it to the plate by being attached on the other way. We were just, this is the reason why these tools are given to adults and not to children, but I must say that a bunch of children who are absolutely the most immature adults you will ever see in your life were having the blast of their lifetime. And while me and George play in adult heaven in the background, I'm going to tell you a little bit more information and specifications about this machine. The spindle's power is 200 watts. Also, the speed of the spindle is from 0 to 13,000 RPM with a closed loop control. And the collet is a custom collet with a 1 8 inch integrated optional with 1 quarter inch 6 millimeter and 4 millimeter. I read that very uh, weirdly like that because these are words again if you know me personally you know that I'm no good with measurements and this is the kind of machine that you actually really do need to be good with measurements uh, but in my case even with my useless measuring uh, we still managed to get this to work. Now, like I said earlier in the video, this machine also can be used with a fourth axis. This is for 3D carving like chess pieces or whatever the heck you want to 3D carve with your CNC 3D carving machine. It's really a beast of a machine, to be honest, and I really have not even come close to unlocking the full potentials of this machine. I do want to mention that there is a really cool little sucky thing that goes over the tool head which I just use my vacuum cleaner to suck with and yes I know that this is not ideal especially for cutting carbon and those of you who know that I was probably killing myself by cutting the carbon well I'm so sorry but I did it once and in future we will try to figure out a much better way perhaps cutting inside of a tray of water which is something I've seen but for now it just feels really good to be able to say I'm now able to CNC and the next thing we need to do with this little thing that we made is give it to George and let him build it so that we can fly it around and show you what it's actually capable of making. And now that we've managed to make a small drone, obviously the possibilities for this are absolutely endless for me. But I want to show you what George would do with something like this. And in the background, that's going to play while I explain to you a little bit more about the machine. There will be a link in the description for the machine. Of course, if you buy from that link, that will be an affiliate link. So I will get a small amount of kickback to my channel for you purchasing through those links. Of course, we are at the end of the video. And this is the important part of the video where I need to say a massive thank you to my Patreons whose names you can see on the screen right now. If you're interested in behind the scenes photos and videos as well as the odd live stream now and then also there is loads more coming to the Patreon so if you're interested in supporting this channel on Patreon go check out the link in the description. I'll also leave a link for George so please go and support his work over on his Instagram and this is where I'll tell you if you didn't like it I don't care, and you should now. Cool.